Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Age of Sigmar gets colossal. That's right, we've got the Stormcast lining up opposite the mighty green Oryx. To give you some idea of why we are here, there are three regions in the middle of the table that the Stormcast are desperately trying to lay their hands on. This is because the Orcs, the Oryx, should I say, are overrunning their lands, pillaging left and right, and the Stormcast are not standing for this. So they need to light their celestial beacons at these three locations to call down an endless tide of reinforcements to fight back the Green Menace. So what that translates to is both sides are trying to take control of these areas. If either side at the end of a battle round controls two of them, then they will win the game. So quite simple. We've also got some mysterious terrain. So let's go through what each one is before we get into the armies. Here we have a mystical pool. We also have a mystical dragon fate dais. We have a deadly set of ruins here, which could be quite nasty. We have a sinister archway over there. And we have an inspiring tower. So of course it's the tower, the ruins, and the dragon fate dais that we're trying to control. Let's head on over to the Orcs, who of course are commanded by Mr. Remington Steel, and let's see what he's got for us today. Alright, Warhammer fans, we've got some Orc Boar Boys over here on some newly based um, bases there. Most of them. Mm -hmm. And then to the left of these we have 20 Savage Orcs with extra arrows and feral bows. Oh so dear. That would be good. I might get some extra shooty ability with that. And I have an orc boss here, and he's got the big war banner. He certainly has. That's quite a banner on him. Mm. Um, I've sacrificed him having a massive chopper, which is great in, in a combat. But instead he has extra abilities with this, which we'll come to later. Behind him is my uh, army commander. It's Ashhag, his back, the slaughterer. And uh, this time I've learnt my lesson, and he's just going to hang right back and put his command ability around him rather than making him jump into the battle and losing precious wounds. Next to hit next to uh, them we've got the uh, Black Hawks. I've doubled the number in this battle so we've got uh, I think 12 of them plus they're uh, just an, a normal Black Hawk um, <coughs> boss there. Nothing special. Um, so then we have this guy that's going to count as a, uh, a rock lobber but instead of rocks he spurts out these little squigs um, then we've got some six river trolls. So river trolls, they can spew sick up to eight inches in the shooting phase. You know all about that. <laughs> and uh, they also minus one to hit in combat because they're all slimy. And to the far side over there, we have fully painted Mangler Squig, which has a, a, a random 3d6 movement. And uh, that guy can be a right beast if uh, you get on his bad side. Very mangly. And that's my, uh, that's my army. So let's swing around and see what the Stormcast are bringing to the party. So starting at this end we have the Knight Venator with his bow. We have three Retributors towered over by the Golden Colossus which is a custom war scroll which I will link in the description so you can go and check out his rules. Further along we have the Knight Azeros ready to spread his beacon of light. And further along still, we have six Liberators, backed up by five Judicators. There are also four Prosecutors just lurking in the heavens, waiting to swoop down at any time. So they'll be joining the party at some point. And here's a nice overview of the battlefield. You can see the Stormcast are quite a bit outnumbered, but they are quite powerful. Not a huge model count game. More for the Orcs, but a lot of that is made up in Arab boys that are probably not that powerful. Right, lads, this is Ashag, your boss here. Listen, we was here first, so let's not let these poncy golden-eared people come and spoil the party. In fact, I'm going to give a hundred gold pieces and the head of their leader boss man to the first person that kills one of these golden fingies. All right, boys? It's revenge time. Only the faithful may defeat the Oryx. 
Only the faithful will reign supreme. Glory to Sigma. Stay golden, boys. Okay, let's get the live roll to see who's getting the first turn. Is it going to be the Oryx of Mr. Remington with his lucky skull dice, or is it going to be the orange golden master? I'll Remington! Oh, Both got a one. Can I have to re-roll? He's going for a different dice. He's not feeling lucky with that one. A three. Remington! It's a four. Right, the Oryx are going first. Alright, let's rock and roll. Oryx turn one, and it's been nothing but a huge advance, really. Everything has come forward as far as it can. The Mangler Squig has hopped on top of this tower to claim one of the vital locations. The central one is still unmolested, but this one has an Orc Boar Boy just touching it at the edge there, because of the way that wound allocation works in Age of Sigmar. The owning player can remove whichever models he likes, so if I were to start shooting at them, he would just remove that model last. It's a little bit more safe than you might imagine. Everything else crept up, and the only shooting that took place, which was from the rock lobber, and that failed to hit. So, it's going to be over to the Stormcast. Stormcast turn one. Quite eventful. So, the Judicators crept up a little bit, just to get within shooting range. The Colossus and the two knights moved up. The knight Azeros moved onto this terrain. And then he was within ten inches of those Orc Arrow Boys, which was going to help me, which we'll get to in a moment. Over here, the Prosecutors decided to enter the fray immediately on this side of the table to threaten this Mangler. And they had some shooting attacks at him. I think they put two wounds on him, so whittling him down. And there's not really much over here that can support him right now. Now, back to the shooting, because the combined shooting power of the Judicators and the Knight Venator all poured into these Orc Arrow Boys. They killed eight, which meant that even without rolling a dice, they were already failing the Battle Shock test. And as a result, four more ended up running away. So that's a huge wad of them gone. And down here, the Liberators charged into these Boar Boys, mainly to contest this very important area here, which they needed to be. And they did manage to kill one of them in combat as well and didn't take any wounds back. They're quite tough, these Liberators. We're going to see who's going to get the first crack at the second battle round. Could be quite a big one, because I'm feeling the Oryx are moving into range to unleash their fury very shortly. So, let's have the roll-off right here. What colour is he going for? He's going for the skull. The orange comes up with a four, and the skull is a two, so it's going to be the Stormcast getting first crack at turn two. Partway through Stormcast turn two, and you'll notice that the Arrow Boys are down to three models. And that's before this turn's battle shock phase. That's because, yet again, they were pelted with arrows from the Judicators and the Knight Venator, aided by the Azeros Lantern. So, quite a few casualties going on there. Over at this side, the Prosecutors moved back a little bit, because it's possible that the Mangler could get two turns in a row next, so they don't want to be that close to him. And then they threw their hammers at him and put another wound on him. Not enough to diminish his abilities yet, so I'm sure he's looking for some vengeance shortly if he wants to leave that piece of terrain. In the middle here, the Colossus moved forward and has charged into the Black Orcs, which is going to be quite tasty. And of course, this combat's still going on. So we'll get back to you with the result of the close combat phase. OK, so we've reached the end of the Stormcast turn two. The combat phase was quite eventful. The Colossus went first, and he, first of all, he picked up and successfully threw one of the Black Orcs at Azhag and took a wound off him, which is the ultimate insult, throwing one of your own troops into your face. He then went on and killed five more of them in close combat, which is quite nice. And then when they got round to hitting back at him along with the boss here, they ended up knocking five wounds off him, so he's been knocked down a power threshold for next turn, so that could help. Over on this side, the Liberators and the Boar Boys just had a little bit of a pillow fight, only did one damage each to each other, which wasn't enough to remove any models. So, the only Battle Shock test that's forthcoming is the Black Orcs, which we're going to do live, because it's so exciting. So, the bravery of a Black Orc is six, uh, but they get plus two. Eight, because they have a banner. 
So they've lost six men, so if they get three, then they're going to potentially run away with some more models. Alright. One or two will be no more casualties. So it's three, so that's one more Black Orc is going to run for the hills. Alright, one of them's wounded, so maybe the wounded one can run away. There he goes. Yep, I think that is, I think that's how it would work. Since you can just pick a model to run away, no doubt. Now it's time for some live battle shock that could potentially finish off these Orc Arrow Boys. They lost five men in this turn. They've got three left. So, yeah, add two to bravery, so... They currently have a bravery of seven. So two plus five, that's just equal, so they're not going anywhere. <laughs> they're quite satisfied with their performance so far. <laughs> going into Oryx, turn two. So we're in the first part of Oryx, turn two, just before the combat phase. So not much change over here. They're still staring each other down. Azhag has got stuck in down here, but before he charged into the Knight Xeros, he used his magic spell to put a wound onto the Colossus. So that was quite tasty. The Arrow Boys, what's left of them, fired into the Knight Venator, took a wound off him. You can see here that the trolls have diminished in number from six to four. That's because they charged across this deadly ground and lost two of them on the way. So that wasn't very nice at all for them. The Rock Lobber, also known as the Squig Spitter, or whatever it's called, fired and unfortunately did not wound also at the Knight Venator. So we're heading into the close combat phase and there's quite a few of them. So it's going to be quite juicy. I think lots of tactical decision making going on here about which one to do first. So we'll be back with the result of that shortly. So the Auric combat phase was quite eventful. The trolls, who were immediately regretting charging through the this deadly area because they lost two of their own people, they went first and they obliterated the retributors in one fell swoop. So if that Colossus wasn't within half an inch of this piece of terrain, the game would be over right now. So it's pretty damn lucky that he's standing there. Also, the Liberators against the Boar Boys, not a huge amount was accomplished. One wound was put onto the Liberator to finish him off, and the same for the Boar Boy. Here, Azhag, the Slaughterer, he didn't really do any slaughtering, he put two wounds onto the Knight Azeros, who then did one back to him, I believe, so he's taken quite a few now because the Colossus actually picked up and tossed one of the Black Orcs into him again, smack into the back of his head. So that's how he's taken most of his wounds so far, actually. And speaking of the Colossus, it downed three more Black Orcs. Because of his diminished abilities, it's not going to be quite so nasty now, but still enough to take out three of them. And then, with the attacks that came back at him, he didn't take any further damage. So, we've got some Battle Shock tests to do. So, the Black Orcs... With their banner, uh, the Bravery 8, they've lost 3, and a 4, so nothing happens to them. The Liberators, and they're all of a 6, they will lose another one, because they're Bravery 6, and they've only lost 1. Oh. It's a 3, so no. I bet that was going to land on a 6 if it wasn't for that guy's base, so the dead body actually saved them there, I think. The Boar Boys, Battle Shock as well. Okay, they've got 7 Bravery. So they're going to be fine. Now we've got some troll battle shock to see if they were so put off by two of their brethren just tripping and dying in these ruins. Let's see, what's their bravery? <laughs> it's not... oh shit. The bravery of a troll is not that high. It's five. So the trolls rolled five on their battle shock test. Their bravery is five. They lost two models, so that means two more of them are going to be so terrified that their friends tripped and died that they are also going to run for the hills. Of course. That is not ideal at all for them. Still got two left, so they're still in there. Okay, it's time to roll to see who gets the first crack at battle round three. What colour dice are you feeling lucky with, Red, Mr. Red, no, Rainton? whites. He's going for the white indecision. Rosa, it's a four for the... I'm not going to do that, no oh, way. Oh, it's only a one. No way. So it's going to be the Stormcast going first in round three. Let's see if they can make it count. So partway into Stormcast turn three, the Knight Venator has run away from the trolls a bit, so he's not too close anymore, and then he fired his once per game magic arrow into Azhag, but unfortunately he passed his armor save. So that ability was not that useful at all. But he did manage to shoot it with his eagle, which did a bit of damage, and the Judicators, who were ensorcelled, from this mystical pool also managed to damage him quite a bit as well. 
So he's down to six wounds, Mr. Azhag now. Also, as you can see over here, the prosecutors have charged headlong into the Mangler Squig. We'll see if that gamble pays off as we enter the combat phase. Note to self, do not charge prosecutors headlong into Mangler Squig ever again. <laughs> as you can see, he ate them for breakfast. All four of them absolutely toasted, even though they got to go first on him and knock more wounds off him. Even in a diminished state, that still wasn't enough, and he just completely munched on them. So that did not go very well at all. Also, a couple of other things went well for the orcs, because as we swing over here, you'll see that the liberators became befuddled this turn, which meant they couldn't strike back at the boar boys, but they only took one damage as a result of that, so could have been a lot worse. This fight here, the knight Azeros managed to strike first on Azhag, and he knocked him all the way down to two wounds. He wounded with all of his four attacks because he was ensorcelled from being near this terrain. So that works very nicely for him. But then when Azhag hit him, he knocked him down to his final wound. So that could be bad. Something else that could be really bad for the Stormcast. The Colossus has become unscrewed. That's because when the Black Orcs were hitting him, they rolled a six to hit, followed by another six, which means that his ankle is now leaking precious life juices. So in each of my hero phases from now on, I'm going to have to lose D6 mortal wounds, which is quite bad. He's on eight at the moment. And he managed to kill a Black Orc as well, because he's been quite diminished now, so his abilities aren't quite so powerful. We're going to need a Battle Shock test for those Black Orcs, though, for the one that they lost. But I don't think they can actually fail it with losing one model, so they don't need one at all, so ignore that. So, we are moving on to the Auric turn three, and it's turning a little bit in their favour at the moment, now that the Prosecutors are dead, and the Liberators are still going to be befuddled. Auric turn three, and there's not that much left on the table now, so all in one big chunk. So the trolls moved back this way a bit to unleash their vile vomit at the Colossus, and they put more damage on him. So he's down to his last four wounds, looking very, very vulnerable indeed. Azhag used an arcane bolt to finish off the knight Azeros, and then because he was then free, he was able to charge the knight Venator. And in the shooting phase, the Rock Lobber missed, as always. The Arrow Boys did nothing as well. And then when we got to the combat phase, he had a bit of a dilemma. Did he try and take out the Colossus first, or did he attack with Azhag first and try and bring down the Knight Venator before it took out him, potentially? So he went with Azhag first, knocked the Venator down to three wounds. Then the Colossus went and took out one Black Orc. One Black Orc only. Couldn't do any other damage because he's really, really weak now because he's really getting down there in wounds. And then when they struck back at him, they couldn't further diminish his abilities. They couldn't put any more damage on him because of his tremendous save. And then over here, the Knight Venator, when it struck back at Azhag, couldn't do anything, missed all of its attacks. And over here, the Boar Boys, against the befuddled Liberators, still managed to put three wounds on them. So one of them was already damaged, so that's two models gone. So they're going to need a Battle Shock test now, which I'm going to take live right here. So here we go. It's a one, so they're fine. And this Black Orc as well needs a Battle Shock test. He'll only fail it on a six, though. And it's a two, so he is fine as well. So we're going into battle round four, and we're going to see who gets the first go at it. I think the Stormcast really do need it, otherwise they could be toast. So here we go. It's a four for the Stormcast. What colour dice is Rem going to go for? It's red. Remington! Yes. It's a five. The Oryx are going first. That could be crucial. If they could kill this Colossus this turn, <laughs> could be huge. Let's see what they can do. Oryx turn four. The Stone Thrower, or the Squig Thrower, actually did some damage for a change. It killed one of these Judicators, wounded another, so that was nice. Azhag finished off the Knight Venator with combination of an Arcane Bolt and then in close combat. This combat over here continued to be a nothing, because they're both befuddled this turn, so nothing could be done there. It feels like these Liberators have been befuddled forever. Then over here, the Trolls vomited on the Colossus. He's down to three wounds now. No one could damage him in combat, and he was able to finish off the final Black Orc, but nothing done on this guy. So, it's going to be the Stormcast turn four. There's not a whole lot left. It's going very quickly now, this game. Stormcast turn four and very eventful. So, the Judicators managed to kill Azhag the Slaughterer with a hail of arrows, 
There he is, he went down. Over here, the Liberators finally weren't befuddled, and as a result of that, in the combat, they took a wound off the Boar Boys, who are still befuddled. And over here, as you can see, the Colossus is dead. It took down the final Black Orc, but then the boss with the banner finished him off. He was up down to his final wound, so he is toast, which means that at the end of Battle Round 4, the Oryx control this central piece of terrain. They control the tower that the Mangler Squig has been happily sat on for the entire game. And this one is just being contested by both sides. So the Oryx are holding two pieces of terrain, which means that they win, as per the scenario. So it's an Oryx victory. What do you think of that, Mr. Ren? I don't know. It felt like I was going to lose that game because the first two rounds had just decimated my my uh, troops. But if it, if it, you know that Mangler Squig, that just saved the day, really. Yeah, the prosecutors really need to learn not to attack Mangler Squigs because they went down, and the Retributors got annihilated by the trolls all in one go. So uh, that really turned the tables, didn't it? Yeah, I was lucky enough to roll a six to wound this guy, so um, that kind of leaked out some of his life force a bit. These guys. T tremendous, they just stayed where they were. Um, in retrospect, I should have probably held these guys back earlier on. Um, they got so pummeled. Um, Ball Boys did alright, just held those guys up, just, you know, didn't really do a lot of damage, but they just held them up. Yep, the Liberators are good for that, holding people up and not dying with their good saves and the re rolls of ones with the shields. I mean, the Rock Lobber got three wounds against you all game, and it was. Uh, so a bit of a nothing model, really, when you think about how powerful it is. The Colossus versus the Black Hawks was a really good duel, wasn't it? Yeah, I never thought I'd win that, but I think you had a couple of unlucky rounds. What do you think of its rules, now that you've actually played them? Because before, you'd only looked at them on the screen. I thought it was slightly overpowered, but um, I think because I had so many more troops than you, it kind of worked out at the end. But You think maybe it could use a bit less rend? On its attacks. Yeah, maybe, or maybe a less saving throw. Maybe a four up saving throw instead of three up. But, uh, I think if you'd have rolled a bit better, you could have slaughtered all of those guys. Um, and maybe won the game for yourself there. It was, it, it was close. It was. And of course, we'll discuss this further on the show this week. So, good night, ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are. And especially good night to our wonderful Patrons who make this all possible. All right, lads. As Haggers bought it, but now I'm the boss because I killed the big goldish shiny thing, and I'm gonna just like try and try and sell it or something, or we chop it up and then like sell the bits, or maybe eat them and then get its power. So yeah, uh, yeah. Well done, lads, and uh, I'm your new boss. Cheers. Look what my mangler did Look what my mangler did Mangler did Cause it's a squig Look what my mangler did My old war boss against and his colossus Who do you think will win? Just look what the war boss did Look what the war boss did It defeated Andy's Sigma rights and me orcs are gonna put the world to rights Look what the mangler did Hey! Look what the mangler did It's a giant squid